Hey guys, welcome to No Talks Allowed. Uh, I am your venerable forever host, Josh. Uh, I've only missed like two episodes, unlike uh, this Steve guy who's also not here. Which, by the way, uh, Steve is no longer going to be taking a primary host role. He might come back for a couple guest appearances. So uh, we have a third slot now available for guests if if you're interested in joining us for an episode or two. But in the meantime, I'm stuck with this guy over here. Uh, I guess his name is Big Pod, but you know he's got another name that I can't pronounce for the life of me. So he's just known as Big Pod. How's it going today? Doing great. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> All right, uh, Big Pod. Uh, it's probably going to be the episode title, but uh, and it's super exciting. Whenever an article like this comes around. The Linux, de- it might actually be the year of the Linux desktop. Yeah. Like, yeah. it it has been a meme since the year 2016 with the release of Ubuntu 16.04. That's where this started. Is it finally time? Mm, I don't know. It's just a bit more than 2%, and even that is mostly from SteamOS. So, I don't know. But SteamOS runs Linux, right? Yes, but yeah. it's kind of in the same vein as uh, Chrome OS to me. Because if we actually counted Chrome OS, which is also running Linux, we would have a lot more. But nobody counts Chrome OS well, and Linux. You can install Linux applications on Chrome OS now, can't you? Yeah, and it runs Linux kernel. Don't forget yeah, that. So, uh, so just install Steam on on your Chrome OS. Yes. And you hopefully can. your Chromebook is powerful enough to play a single Steam game. It mm. pro- it could probably run uh, Counter Strike. It probably cannot run play Crisis. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, yeah. counting uh, that is a bit like like again counting Chrome OS. Even though both of them run Linux kernel, saying that people if, if they if they uh, discriminate against Chrome OS. If that's the right word, they should they should also use the same criteria for Steam OS. They probably should. It's probably not a bad idea that they that they should because you know uh, there's a lot of special sauce going on with Steam yeah. OS to uh, make, or better make a lot yet of we shouldn't discriminate against any Linux desktop and just go it's all Linux it's running Linux kernel because that that should be when we're talking about Linux that should be the only metric because. That that's why it's Linux because it's running a Linux kernel. Okay, okay, yep. Uh, so uh, to break down some of the numbers here, when we look at our uh, li- Linux uh, operating systems here, obviously the number one is going to be SteamOS, right? Uh, yeah. That is locked in at forty-five percent, uh, and that is registered as SteamOS Holo sixty-four bit. That is forty-five point three four percent percentage of the share. And then we have Arch Linux right after it at 7.9%. Yeah. And then what, what I found surprising is Free Desktop SDK 23.08 Flatpak Runtime. That is the Steam Flatpak at 6.05%. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm actually kind of surprised by that. Because that tells me that people are actually using the Steam Flatpak. And that Flatpak as a standard for Steam is starting to really come around uh, because uh, right after right after that, then you get your usual suspects of, you know, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and uh, Manjaro. Uh, and after that, you get Ubuntu Core 22, which could only be one thing. That's that's a Steam snap, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's what I With thought. With a pretty good respect, about 2.62%. Yeah. Now, and then, uh, these and numbers... then you have PopOS with... 2.75, which is way too much. Yeah, and then me. other at 23.98. Yeah. Now, uh, these numbers sound really small, but at the same time, you also have to realize that uh, there's a lot of different distributions. Yeah. Half of which seem to be based off of either Ubuntu or Arch Linux. Yeah. But there's just that many distributions that that uh, package up Steam, and uh, just I you could probably safely assume that anybody that has a relatively medium to powerful computer probably has Steam installed. Yeah. We should also remember that all of these numbers are only uh, only spec- are a specific version. Yeah. Which means 
2204 is separately counted from 202210 2304 2304 10 and 2404 same is with mint it goes yep. into granularity of point release yeah now uh of course this is all data pulled off of the steam hardware survey uh yeah. which uh Take always take these numbers with a grain of salt, because we Definitely. don't really know we don't really know how many what the what the data size even actually is for the hardware survey, it's and how well it's they, parsed. Or, also, that. well, yeah, because you know it, if we want to look at how it's parsed, just don't look at other settings where everything's over hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Well, like, uh, okay, probably fifty percent of what they what, more than fifty percent of other settings is at 100% and more, or 101% is the smallest one over 100. Yeah, now my favorite statistic here is what they have multi-monitor resolution under Linux as. That's 3840 by 1080, which means that uh, if you're running multiple monitors and you're running Steam, you have three monitors. No, it's two monitors. Or Oh, is that two? Oh, yeah. One and right. 20 that is, that is... by two is 38. Yeah. 40. Yep, that, that that is two monitors. I thought that was three. I was going to be super excited there for a minute. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. uh, but if you look at overall numbers, it seems that uh, Linux users have, on average, uh, more underpowered computers than Windows users. Or average yeah. user. Uh, overall well, users. The uh, the the flat pack and uh, the snap share percentage could be affecting that as well because I don't know if uh, I don't know if the Steam flat pack can s directly see yes. what model GPU you have. Uh, it should be able to, as well as it should be able to. Uh, all all hard all uh, all hardware is passed through. Okay, uh, so. Yeah, but get... we should also remember that at the end of the day, uh, Linux systems, uh, first of all, is of course Steam Steam Deck, which has AMD AMD custom GPU 0405 at 35%. Yeah, uh, so realistically, what this Linux market share is telling us is just how popular Steam Deck is. Yeah, and, <laughs> and how popular Intel Iris XC graphics are at... 2.1%, which is way more than than uh, the the first NVIDIA card at 1.52. Yeah, now, the Intel Iris Xe graphics, uh, that's, that's an interesting that's number. Uh, that, that is uh, your 11th and newer generation uh, Intel CPU. Yes, yes. And earlier Intel Arc drivers reported themselves as that, too. Really? Yes. That's strange. So if you're running if you're running a six point two kernel, yeah, to six point four, I think it is. It it identifies as an Intel XE. Also, let's be clear, uh, the numbers for graphics cards on Intel are very 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 suspect on how well they are collected. Well, I can because just Linux. Tell you... Because Linux reports very weirdly. You have what is essentially about 100 graphics cards. Uh, many of them should should have been put together into the same category. For example, what is the difference between Intel Iris Xe graphics and Intel, then in the uh, parentheses, R iris parentheses r x e graphics <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's that's one thing and then of course you have intel iris plus graphics g1 which is which is let me tell you a secret actually intel intel iris x e graphics <laughs> because it's just a, <laughs> just a more specifically named uh intel iris x e graphics is the 11 gen yep. cpu yeah so uh, I guess what you're gonna have to do is if you really want to really want to look at break up the calculator here, and and a lot of fact sheets, <laughs> or or you can Google it. 
Yes. But speaking of Google, speaking of Google, there's a chance. There's a chance out there that a search engine optimization is going to get even worse. Do you know why, Big Pod? Because apparently Google leaked a, a document on how their search engine works. What? No, they didn't do that, did they? Uh, on how Google uses uh, what Google what elements Google used to rank content. Thousands okay. of documents were apparently okay. released on GitHub. Uh, two thousand five hundred ninety-six changed files, with one hundred seventy-eight thousand seven hundred sixty-four additions and zero deletions. Yeah. And uh, looking at this, this is source code for an Elixir API, of which Google really? has publicly said that they use Elixir uh, for something. I don't, I don't know my uh, web dev stuff very well, so uh, I Elixir think Elixir is not definitely not a web dev language. It's or, probably a backend. Okay, so yeah. Uh, this is an. I think that this is just API stuff that uh, yeah. they just accidentally leaked out into the open. And uh, uh, I they... haven't looked at the code, so I can't say much. But my guess is this is a a service that is that is called either either by an automated program or every time you every time they index a site. Yeah. My now it would be my guess based on. Thinking how 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 I would architect such an architecture. Now, uh, obviously, there there's a there's a couple of takeaways from this here. Uh, first of all, links matter. Yes. So if if you got links in your in your blog post, you want to put more links in there. Same thing with brands. If you're a name brand, you're already set in gold. Uh, sorry for the sorry for the little guy. Uh, same thing with uh, entities. Uh, so like if you're if you're an independent author, sorry. <laughs> uh, put your name in as much as possible. Yeah, that you're an yeah. author. Indicate that you're an author. Yeah. Uh, site authority. Uh, low quality content on part of the site can impact the site's ranking as a whole. So uh, yeah. post better crap. Uh, and then of course uh, Chrome browser ranking. So how often people visit your website from the from the Google Chrome browser. And stuff like that. Uh, it is the I'm gonna have a link for this in in the description as well as the show notes, and it's gonna lead you to a Linus Tech Tips forum post because that's where I picked this up from. But uh, it's an interesting conversation that they're having in there, and uh, I and it's and uh, it's very well resourced uh, the original the uh, top post, and I highly recommend. That if you're curious about this, give this a read. Because uh, it gets very technical and very interesting. And it was it was leaked by a GitHub bot. <laughs> so I don't there is no way that this is intentional. <laughs> yeah. Well I I don't actually have that much a stake on how well uh, Google is ranked because I don't use Google anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm not one of the same people who use Bing. I I used a Brave search myself. Uh, I might, might maybe would use that, but it does. First thing it does for you is AI results. I don't really care for that. It does an AI summary thing, which sometimes yeah. it's all right, but other times you question it, so you click on the links anyway. The way, while yes, uh, Bing also does AI summary, it does it on the site, so it's not like directly in the view view of it. You, and it literally yeah. just starts the conversation if you click on it. It's not like directly in the view of what you're, where you're searching, if you're searching for links, you don't have to first scroll past it. That to me is a bad user experience. Because if I'm searching, I'm likely searching for a link, not actually going for a chat, because then I would open the chat. 
Yeah. Uh, now, uh, I don't know how important this is anymore because uh, how often are you actually going to Google and searching something? At least I'm not. I I'm, am pretty often. Yeah. Or to Bing in my case. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is lately, but it's just like I found better search results just typing them into YouTube lately. Hmm. I, I I don't use YouTube yeah, a lot yeah. because honestly, for to for me, scrub if I'm when I'm like looking for something, whether it be coding, whether it be something like that, where I'm going to be searching a lot, I don't want to go and actually scrub through video to find that specific thing I'm looking for. I don't either, but you know, uh, that to me is very, 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 it, it is bad very bad. Experience. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I can't, yeah. But my issue is that like, uh, when I, when I go to Google and I'm like searching stuff, I I'm talking about going to Google directly. I'm no longer getting like those independent blog posts that were yeah. such a great resource back in the day. I'm not getting like, uh, documentation links or wiki links or uh -huh. like it or you know like when i was trying to research like the xz vulnerability i was just getting news articles of people discussing it i wasn't even getting that the, the yeah. article that you found well not, now we know why yeah yeah now we know why <laughs> bing bing doesn't actually have that bing has horrible search results which is why i get much better search results for my queries yeah but uh at least, at least Google is not immediately taking things down. Unlike uh, Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Spotify. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many of you actually have looked at this thing. Made this little box called a car thing. Terrible name. And uh, before, yeah. before like uh, this this new this news story came around. I had no idea that this thing existed. <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't think most people did. Yeah, but it's apparently a little box that connects to a Wi-Fi network, and all it does is just stream music from your Spotify account. That's all it does. Yeah, it's meant for and, cars, uh, as yeah, the name the, implies. Yeah, it's meant to sit in sit in your uh, the dash of your car, and they decided, you know what. Uh, we need uh, Spotify decided that they need to uh, go through, uh, slim down their company a little bit because you know they spent they've been spent they've been spending big money <clears throat> the, the past few years off of on basically seemingly everything. Yeah, and uh, this thing only came out like last year, I think. Something and like it, yeah, it hasn't been it hasn't been around for very long at all, and. Uh, they're, they gave it a hard end of life date and uh after this end of life date it is software disabled so yeah, literally they're it, pulling it to the plug completely they're not even just ending support they're literally going and and pulling pulling all the possible cables from it so it doesn't actually work yeah they're yeah. straight up saying that uh, you you do a factory reset on it and then you ship it off to your local electronics recycler yeah. <laughs> That's not how this thing is supposed to... This is not how this recycling is supposed to work. You're supposed to redu re <clears throat> reduce and then reuse before you recycle. They they basically say after December 9th, 2024, carting will be discontinued and will no longer be operational. This is directly from the their support site in the article of carting discontinued. Yeah, and there are no plans on a replacement. Sorry. Yeah. The the interesting thing is why they would need to disable it completely. What are they doing that it, it cannot operate just as a normal normal player? Well, my theory is that this thing requires a Wi Fi Wi Fi network to even function to begin with, so it is obviously internet facing. And yeah. they just don't want to they don't want to support the software with security patches. They don't need to. Like to say, it's not supported. That's true. What I am guessing is that they are, they have special APIs for it. 
didn't use the same APIs as your your uh, Spotify player uses. That would be my guess. And the only version in which the discontinued would actually make sense for it need to be so thorough. Because if they're not using the default APIs for playing, public facing APIs, then what's the point of discontinuing if it can operate just as a normal player? That's true. So in my I... guess is they're going to be deleting those API endpoints that are specific to carting. So all so, it's gone. My theory is that here in the future, there's going to be some guy post a video going like, I have jailbroken the Spotify car thing and now we can install any, whatever we want on it. Yeah. Uh, uh, not on the topic list. Did, did you know that, that, uh, that it didn't take people... Uh, uh, more than a couple of weeks or really a couple of days to jailbreak that rabbit r1 ai thing <laughs> i i think i heard about that but i didn't hear too much about it <laughs> so basically if people want to jailbreak things they will yeah i mean yes reverse engineering is a difficult difficult job and it takes quite a bit of skill to be able to do it <clears throat> but uh, when you when you really like your thing and you're committed to it, you're gonna put the effort into it. Just look or at you wa want to see how 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 it works, or in some cases doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, if you want to see a really dedicated crowd to making old things work, just look at game preservation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or the retro crowd. Yeah, uh, it is it is it is a work of art. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Anyways, I want to touch on touch on a thing that we just uh, created for the show, and it's a way for you guys to shout us without having to send us an email. Uh, I have decided to spin us up a No Tux Allowed Discord server, <coughs> and of course, it's got our fancy logo on it with the crossed out tux on it. I I spent like five minutes setting the server up, Big Pod, just randomly. It's just like I'm just yeah. gonna do this now, and. Uh, so hopefully I got roles and permissions set up right. And there, there's literally already one meme in the general chat, so we all uh, made course. it. Of course. Of uh, course. There, there have been some people that, that we sent links out to, and they've already posted memes, so we know that it works. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have that same link, which is set to expire never, hopefully, in the description. In the description, and it's probably going to be eternally there, just in case. And uh, we'll see how long this Discord server lasts before, you know, uh, either Big Pot or I get sick and tired of moderating it. Yeah. <laughs> of which then we'll probably have somebody else moderate it for us. <laughs> Very likely. <laughs> Very likely. But, so yeah. So join uh, us on our Discord. Yeah, join us on the Discord. Or if you're, or if you're, if you're a freedom thumper and you just don't, don't ever want to uh, install Discord because, you know, you don't trust Discord, the company, at all, you can send us an email. In fact, I would still personally prefer it if you sent us emails because, you know, I love receiving emails. I don't receive enough emails in a single day, so you need to send me more yeah. emails. So you can always send us an email at, at contact at tuxbase.com. In fact, send us an email telling us your favorite distribution, why you're using it, and why BigPod should install it. And And... Of course, if you want to be able to tell Big Pie that directly, uh, we have these contact links that may or may not magically be appearing on the screen right now. I still don't ever see these myself because I don't actually watch the video. So I, yeah. I have no faith that they're actually there. <laughs> but I'm they certain are. I'm certain that Big Pie is going to take the time and draw a big red circle around them to make it very apparent that they're there. But uh, they exist. So you can shout at both of us directly there, but uh, you know, shout us at the Discord server. You can add us. I mean, I I already turned that no notification off, so good <laughs> luck. But uh, have fun with it. But uh, Big Pod, I feel like an idiot. Really? Why? Uh, I don't know how networking works on Debian. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that on their minimum ISO. Uh, which is what I installed first. Uh, they don't use Network Manager. 
All right. Okay. Well, that makes sense. So uh, let's look, let's look th let's look around a little bit more. They're not using system D network D. Really? They're they're not using NetPlan. Of course. What they're using is a system D service that manually calls IF up. Why? I don't know. But when I disable that, there is still an active network. And oh. I don't know what's running the network. Have you tried rebooting afterwards? I have. <laughs> and they're still a working network. So it's like, okay. okay, they've taken stability to the extreme here. Yeah, but... What is, manag uh, what is the ma managing the network? <laughs> no idea. I wouldn't call that stability. I would call that actually in some way trying to uh, make user have a bad experience. Yeah, well, so I'm what are you going to do now? Well, my solution here to this is that I'm I'm rather enjoying the staleness of Debian <laughs> because, you know, packages are actually compiled, right? And they're actually working. They're, they're, they just got a little bit of age to them, but that's fine. I'm fine with a little bit of age on my on my system. So uh, we're going to do the... We're going to do the savage thing, and we're going to attempt to uh, figure out how to use the bootstrap to bootstrap the system, just like the good old days. Yes, but I, I think depending on what config you're going to be using for the, the bootstrap, you're going to actually be stuck with the same problem. That's entirely possible. Yes, I don't even. I've never looked at it before, so uh, we're going. We're going to attempt to install Debian. Uh, basically, this is installing Debian the archway. Yes. Uh, and uh, we're <clears throat> going to uh, see how successful I am, and I'll update you guys on it next week because I haven't done it yet. But I've already fired up a virtual machine. Uh, I still haven't figured out how to get that virtual machine to boot. Because <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that uh, they do their packaging a little different. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so uh, it's going to it's going to take me a minute to uh, figure this out because you know when you Google. Uh, how to bootstrap a Debian system. Uh, you get a lot of articles that are 14 years old. <laughs> and I don't know how accurate they are in, maybe, in today's landscape. Maybe <laughs> as a basis, take articles how to bootstrap Ubuntu system. Uh, I could probably base off of that. There's probably not too much difference there between... The, be, between I, I, the I believe the difference is one or two words. In one or two arguments. Yeah, well, it's one, one argument Debian. difference. I bet you one of them is changing Ubuntu to Debian, and then the other no, one I is from I believe, focal to stable. I believe one of them is uh, it's from uh, whatever the the current one is to I don't know whatever the current one is for Debian Bookworm, whatever it's called. Yes, yeah, Bookworm. So you're gonna go from I don't know whatever to, let's say focal to Bookworm. That's the only only thing you need to change, as far as I know. I mean, uh, you also need to manually specify repository too, if I remember right. So you just point uh, to a Debian, a Debian mirror. I believe it's uh, configuration based now. There is some configuration, so that is, that's why, it, and that's why you need to specify that uh, bookworm thing. Okay. Okay. Well, it has uh, I, a repo saved in a file with which version has which repo. So what you're saying is, I've got a man page I got to read. Yes. Okay, probably not okay. just one. Uh, probably not just one. It's going to take a minute. And uh, I'm probably going to have to work on a blog post for this. That way I know how to do this in the because future. Because I need to have uh, like proper chmods and all that bullshit yep. that comes with it. Yeah. Uh, I assume that's probably not going to be nearly as easy as pack strap install. <laughs> nope. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, this is not intended for like the end user to do, but I'm going to do it. This is uh, The bootstrap is intended for distro creators, and that's about it. Yep. Uh, is this the rise of Josh OS? Probably not. <laughs> but uh, depending on how fluid I can make this, that's not entirely off the table. If if you like stale packages, I might have an image. To oh, sell. all right, all right. Is it Debian based? No. Oh, it's, okay. It's probably. I, th I think. I think there is uh, uh, some of the some of the. Red Hat based images that exist. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So Alma, Rocky, Centaur, yeah, that kind yeah, of yeah. world. I believe those oh, exist know, as well. I think that there is an RPM Fusion repository for Enterprise Linux. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I know that Red Hat has an image. Uh, yeah. I am a former Red Hat customer after all. So, uh, of course, I've heard, I've heard, I've seen uh, the, the, e- the marketing emails for that. <laughs> It's like I have no interest in this thing whatsoever because all my all my server network does is it runs two applications and a file share. <laughs> wow, you like stale packages, therefore you might like Red Hat. That's true. That's true. But that's all we got for the show here for today. Uh, Big Pod, I think it was pretty solid, right? Yeah, yeah. But of course, if you love this episode. And you love it so much that you not only want to shout at us, but you want to throw money at us. Tell us how you want to do that, please. Yeah, because I mean, uh, we actually want to know. Yeah, we actually do. I legitimately do want to know. Like, uh, I don't know if I, I don't want to have to commit to the Patreon thing in the blind and hope and pray that it works. So, uh, and that is, I am still very open to that. So it might happen one of these days because it turns out. That when you're self-hosting your podcast platform, it costs money. Yes. <laughs> Didn't you know that? Yeah, it, it costs money. It's it's not free. It's not exactly expensive, but it is noticeable on the budget. Yeah. So tell you what, tell us how you want to s- send us money. In the meantime, guys, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>